Okay, fifth grade, our screencast today is on dividing decimal dividends by multiples of 10, and then reasoning about the placement of the decimal. So we're gonna start with our strategy of using place value disks, um, like we did in our previous screencast, but this time you're gonna notice our dividends look similar. We're still dividing each of them by 10, but this time our dividends will change in terms of where we're starting with the decimal point. So we're gonna start with 54 divided by 10, and we're gonna solve this problem using our place value disks. So we'll draw five tens disks and then four ones disks. So one, two, three, four, five. And each of those will say 10. There's my 50. And now I have four ones disks. One, two, three, four. And I am dividing each of those by 10. So I know I'm gonna have five and four, just like we practiced before. And now I'm dividing my tens disks, each of these, by this 10. So 10 divided by 10 is one. 10 divided by 10 is one, and I'm doing that for each of my tens disks. Now I have one divided by 10. And I know from our place value unit at the beginning of the school year, one divided by 10 would be like one over 10, and we would write that as a decimal 0.1. So each of these disks will be 0 0.1, or we can also say that is one tenth. So our answer is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And then I have tenths, one, two, three, four tenths. So five and four tenths would be our quotient. Let's see how it's different with problem B, where we have the same digits, five and four, but our decimal's in a different spot. In problem A, our decimal is really after the four. Here, it's in between the five and four. So now I'm starting with five and four tenths, and I'm dividing that by 10. So we would have five ones to start out with. And then I have four tenths, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Here I have five and four tenths, so I represented my first number, and I'm gonna draw an arrow and show that I'm dividing each of these by 10. So in my quotient for my picture of my place value disks, I'll have one, two, three, four, five circles. One, two, three, four, five, and then I'll have four in my next column. Okay, so one divided by 10 is going to be one tenth or 0 0.1. So I'm gonna start by filling all of my disks in with 0 0.1. And that's showing I did one divided by 10 is 0 0.1 or one tenth. And I did that for all of these ones to get these. Now I'm taking my four tenths. I split that up into four different place value disks that are worth one tenth each. And I'm gonna divide each of those by 10 to get my place value quotients over here on these disks. So one tenth divided by 10 would be moving over on that place value chart one more spot. So this is gonna be 0 0.01, 0 0.01. And that would be one hundredth. So for our answer here, I have no whole numbers. I don't have any ones or any tens, but I do have tenths and hundredths. And I know that when I'm writing decimals, zero would be my whole number. And then I have the decimal point, my first place value spot after the zero and after the decimal point will be tenths and then hundredths is the next. So here I have one, two, three, four, five tenths and I have four hundredths. So my answer, my quotient to 
5 and 4 tenths divided by 10 is 54 hundredths. And we'll try one more problem that kind of fits in with this family of problems. We have 54 hundredths, so actually the quotient that we just got, and we'll divide that by 10 one more time. So I'm going to start out by showing that I have hundredths and tenths, so I'll draw my five place value disks and my four place value disks. And here I have 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. Those are all worth one tenth. And now I'm gonna draw my hundredths. So I'm gonna represent four hundredths here in these disks. 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. And I'll divide each of those by 10. I'm trying to make my disks a little bigger because up here my writing got a little smushed. So 1 tenth divided by 10 will be 1 hundredth. So 0 0.01 will be my first column. And my second column, 1 hundredth divided by 10 is 1 thousandth, 0 0.001. 0 0.001, 0 0.001. And we do that four times because we're dividing each of these four hundredths by 10. So I'm left with hundredths and thousandths. That means when I'm counting up my answer, I'm gonna have zero in the whole number place, zero in the tenths place, but I will have numbers in the hundredths and thousandths. So I have one, two, three, four, five hundredths, and I have one, two, three, four thousandths. So my answer, or my quotient, is 54 thousandths. Okay, so we can also use, or imagine what this number would look like on a place value chart. And it's really interesting because we have all of our quotients that we just solved on this chart. So if I started with 54, 54 would go right here in my chart. Five tens, four ones. If I divide 54 by 10, I'm moving over one spot on the place value chart. So now I have 5.4. Then if I take my 5.4 and I divide that by 10, I'm moving it over one spot in the place value chart. So now I have 5 tenths, 4 hundredths. And if I take my 5 tenths, 4 hundredths, or my 54 hundredths, and I divide that by 10, I get 54 thousandths, and that would be moving this over one more spot on the place value chart. Each time I divide by 10, the digits move to the right one place value because they're being divided into smaller units. So seeing that pattern of where the decimal is going and where it's being placed is really important as we're solving these types of problems and working with powers of 10. We're going to practice a different kind of problem now. And it's going to be focusing on solving by decomposing the divisor. And we've practiced this before. So it should be a little bit of a review. But we used it with more of estimation and with whole numbers. This time we'll apply it with some decimals. So we're going to start with 54 divided by 90 instead of divided by 10. <coughs> Excuse me, okay, so we have 54 staying the same. And that's because when we decompose the divisor, that's this number, how many groups we're putting it into, not what we're starting with. So I'm going to decompose or break apart 90 into 10 and 9. 
So now I'm doing 54 divided by 10 divided by 9. I can do 54 divided by 10, and I know from our previous example, 54 divided by 10, that we would just move the decimal point one over. So that becomes 5.4. And now I'm just left with 5.4 divided by 9. And that would be 5 and 4 tenths divided by 9, which is 6 tenths. And we've already practiced that decimal division. So we could use our decimal division strategies to solve that. We could use math facts because I know 54 divided by 9 is 6 and it's one decimal point in. I could get out manipulatives and use place value blocks or draw pictures. And so now we have 5 and 4 tenths divided by 90. So let's decompose the divisor. That means this first chunk stays the same, our dividend stays the same, but I can break 90 up into 10 and 9. So now I have 5 and 4 tenths divided by 10 divided by 9. And I know I can move that decimal point over. So this now becomes... 0 0.54 divided by 9. When I divide by this 10 here, I move the decimal one point over, so I've done the division by 10. Now I'm left with just divided by 9. And I know that 54 divided by 9 is 6. And I know that if I had five tens rods, tenths rods, and four hundredths cubes, I could decompose those and I would end up with six hundredths in each group. Okay? And we'll try that, you can see, with three more examples. If you'd like, you can actually pause the video, try solving these on your own, and then go back to check your answers. Um, or you can go ahead with me. So for C, we have 54 hundredths and we're dividing that into 90 groups. So I'm gonna decompose the divisor into 10 and nine. And now when I move the place value spot one over, because I'm dividing by 10, I'll have 54 thousandths divided by nine. And that would mean that I have six thousandths in each group. Now it's hard to get smaller than that, so they've changed the divisor here to 900. And we're starting again with 54. So 54 divided by 900, when I decompose the divisor, I'll have 54 divided by 100 divided by nine and when I am dividing by 100, I move that decimal spot one, two places instead of just one place. So now I have 54 hundredths again, divided by nine. And so that gives me six hundredths, just like above. And for our final practice problem here. I have five and four tenths divided by 900. So I'm decomposing my 900 into 100 and then also divided by nine. So I move this two places. I get 54 thousandths divided by nine. And just like the problem above, we would have six thousandths in each group. So I have two closing questions for you. I want you to answer them on your own before you start your practice problems in your packet. The first one is B and D, these problems here, B and D. They have different dividends and divisors. So this and this are different, and then our divisors here are different, but they have the same quotient. So even though these numbers are different, we still have the same answer 
that's very similar to C and E. We had different dividends and different divisors, but we had the same exact answer. How is this possible? Brainstorm some ideas about what you think and record your ideas. And then the final question is, which strategy do you prefer? So after today's lesson, did you prefer this strategy with the place value disks? Did you prefer using the chart or did you prefer using decomposition or decomposing? We have practiced other strategies, you know, like using models and manipulatives, but out of those three, out of using the chart, decomposing and place value disks, which one did you like the best? Thanks so much.